the first step in device calibration is to go to your device settings, click on Wi-Fi, find the Rapsodo device. Uh, it'll be Rapsodo in-game followed by four digits. Once you connect to that, you can then go to the field calibration app. In the top right hand corner you'll see the device disconnected button. Go ahead and click on that and then you can discover the devices. It'll be one group name for the two devices. Click on it and you should connect and you should then see the server and client information. From here you want to click on the stream tab on the left and then at the top on the right under stream settings you want to make sure that both and trajectory are toggled and that auto exposure is toggled on for both devices. You then press set configuration and start stream once that's done loading. You will then see both streams from the devices pop up. The next step is to get home plate in the middle or as close to the middle of the red box as you can. You also want to make sure that the rubber is included on the stream. Here you can see us adjusting the client device to get home plate in the middle of the red box. And we've completed it now and we're going to slide over to the server side and adjust that stream as well. It's important to note for calibration that the last step involves putting the board at 49 feet. So we have a tape measure set through the mound to the tip of home plate so that we can account for that 49 feet. So now that we have both streams completed, we're going to press stop streams and move to the calibration tab. The first thing that we're going to do is click on the calibrate server button. Here you will see the stream start again and on your right you will see a graphic of the board and where you're supposed to put it on the plate. Please ensure that the edge of the board is lined up with the edge of the white so that calibration gets a clear picture of where home plate is. We also want to make sure that the one-legged side of the calibration board is always on the plate while you're going around it. On the bottom of the board there are measurement marks that represent the front of the plate, the side of the plate, and then the angled side of the plate. These marks help to ensure that the board is centered on each side of the plate. Once the board is set, you press capture and then confirm. And at this point, you do not want to move the board at all until it is done capturing those images for that side of calibration. As you can see in the stream, Robbie is lining up the board and then adjusting the legs of the board to ensure that the board is level. Adjusting the legs to ensure that the board is level is another critical step of calibration so that we make sure that the calibration passes. On the right side of your screen you can see that the graphic has updated to show you where the board's next location is and where you need to put it. While this step is not complicated, it does take a little bit of time to ensure that the board is in the correct position. Robbie has now completed positioning and leveling the board for this step so you'll press capture and confirm again and it will ask you to move on to step three. This step has you moving the board to the third base angle for the server side. Again on this side you want to ensure that the board is level and placed in the correct spot with the board centered using the measurement marks. Here I fast forwarded through the positioning of the board to the capture stage of step three. Now that it is captured successfully, you want to move the board back to the 49 foot mark, which I previously talked about. Uh, the process for lining up the board and leveling it is the same. The only difference is that there isn't a mark that denotes where the board is supposed to go. Just know that you should line up the board in the middle of the tape measure. 
so that it gets the best results. I have once again fast forwarded through this process, but know that it takes a little bit, but if you do it right, it will lead to a good calibration. You can see that I have now pressed the capture and confirm button. These images take slightly longer to capture, so you shouldn't be worried if it takes a little bit longer. From here, we will move on to the client calibration. It's the exact same process, you just hit different sides of home plate. So the first step remains the same, where the board is on the front of home plate. Once that is captured, you move to the opposite side of the plate. Be sure to follow the graphics on the right hand side of the screen as it will tell you exactly which side of the plate is next in the process that you should be focusing on. Once the board is positioned and leveled, you can then press capture and confirm and move on to step three of the client calibration. This step has you place the board on the first base angle of home plate. Once the board is positioned and leveled, you again press capture and confirm, and then you can move the board back to 49 feet for the client step four. When the board is ready, you then press capture and confirm. And as I said before, step four takes a little longer to capture the necessary images. So don't be alarmed if it takes a second longer. From here, we will move to step three verification of the devices. It is important to note that you should not move the board from 49 feet after the client calibration. It needs to stay where it is for verification. The streams will not come up until you press start and then when it's done verifying it will give you a pass fail and that will let you know whether you need to redo calibration or if you're good to go.